Welcome to Best Kept Secrets Travel, Episode 1. My name's Morgan. And I'm Will. And on today's episode, we're going to teach you everything you need to know about how to plan your next adventure. Let's go for it. Intro. <laughs> Best friends and that's for life who stay traveling. I'm talking worldwide, 65 countries between the two. Every moment is so unbelievable. Sharing the best kept secrets about the trips and mistakes they made that they can't forget. So tell me if you're ready for a time to remember as they gear up for the next adventure. Yeah. Woo! Best kept secrets travel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is our first ever episode on Best Kept Secrets Travel Podcast. Yeah, we're here. It's been such a long time coming. I think we spent a whole day probably building this set. Yeah, we spent a few hours going down to a uh, shout out to Wix. We bought some chipboard from Wix, delivered it next day for free, build all this. Then shout out to Vistaprint. We got this uh, from you guys. Then the lighting. The light from Amazon. Lighting around it from Amazon. Speakers. You, you already. Mics, yeah. Yeah, you already had the mic. You even, you even put a hole for the wires just to make it look aesthetically pleasing. To make it look a tiny bit professional, yet it still wobbles a tiny still bit. Still wobbles quite a bit, and you guys can probably hear through the microphone so maybe one day we'll have a solid desk and if you're listening you probably can't hear this but well, you could definitely hear the but it looks nice <laughs> ish we tried yeah we're, we're super excited this is something that we've spoken about for actually quite a while we yeah sort of kept it a little bit hidden it's been a few times drinking <laughs> everything just you're not trying, saying all our main we're, decisions we're just, around drinking, are they? <laughs> we're trying to get this together as we've travelled a lot together and we feel we'd try and share as much with you guys as possible. Yeah, and with COVID going on and actually not being able to travel, we sort of thought it's quite a good time to give it a go and go. Yeah, and the more I think that COVID's been going on, the more people want to travel. So there's the more that people are willing to learn and we can get across them as well. Yeah, and... I assume you know already if you've clicked on this, but we are Best Kept Secrets Travel and we're trying to be here and unlock all the best kept secrets that you don't, I'm just saying random things here. So if we have anything that you guys really want to correct in our episodes, you can try, comment be below, send us messages. The only problem is there's going to be a delay because we're going to try and pre-film as many episodes as possible and edit them up. So there might be a little time lag behind any feedback we get from you amazing guys listening and watching today. But Morgan's going to start to tell you guys everything about trying to follow us. <laughs> please, not in a stalking please, sense. Please, please follow. Yeah, maybe not in a stalking <laughs> sense, no. But uh, follow us in every other sense, probably. So that's on Instagram. That's the BKS Travel. So that's T-H-E-B-K-S-T-R-A-V-E-L. I forgot the L there. <laughs> uh, on TikTok, YouTube, and all podcasts, we are Best Kept Secrets Travel. That's that's quite easy. So please follow us, subscribe, and if you're on YouTube, click that notification bell. So everyone who's watching us on YouTube, hello, waving. We are waving for the for podcasters. <laughs> every 100 subscribers we get on this YouTube channel for the rest of time we will go and plant another tree. During this lockdown, we've realized how much fun it's been going and walking and going outdoors. We haven't been able to get overseas, but we've gone and tried different national trust places we never had before. And if you're listening on a podcast, same very much goes for you, but because it's a little bit harder for us to try and get through to all of our wonderful listeners, for every 50 people who follow us on our podcast, we'll also plant a tree. Seems pretty reasonable. It is pretty reasonable. And what's even nicer, because this episode's all on planning, Morgan and I are going to talk through our way of planning. But to make it so much easier for everyone out there, we're going to, at the end of the video, or a little bit later on in the video, so you really need to watch or listen through where to find it, we're going to put in a completely customized Best Kept Secrets Travel PDF document, which is it's just going to make their life so much easier. It will be the basis for planning any travel trip and it will make things so much easier by just having this pdf and being able to print it out and write your notes down the second you start to get that pen to paper that is when your adventure begins and if you actually start to either message your friend get that pen to paper or anything you're starting that process of going on your next adventure it's so easy to sit at home 
sit with a mate and go, oh yeah, it'd be great if we go away. Nothing will ever get done until you actually made that first step. And by downloading the PDF and start writing all over it, that's going to make your life a lot easier. Makes sense. It does. So <laughs> the first thing that we're going to discuss is the very, very top of your list of planning your, um, your next adventure, which is going to be solo versus group traveling. Yeah, that's whether you want to go alone by yourself or be with other people. Or maybe you've got a partner. partner. Yeah. Or just lots of mates as well. It doesn't have to be one person. So that's normally the basis is when you've sat down and decided you want to go on an adventure, you're either on your own doing whatever you do and just go, actually, I want to go solo traveling. Or you could be in, you know, you could be at a party, you could be in school, or you guys could be finishing your A-levels. You could be doing university degree, you could be doing absolutely anything. And then you could go, let's, let's go as a group and go on an adventure together in our gap year or something and then at least you've got that foundation of who's going and then everything else we talk about will mm. start from there yeah so why, why it's important is because if you're traveling on your own you have 100 percent freedom to do whatever you want whenever you want you could do anything whereas if you're in a group and the bigger the group the less freedoms you get and you basically have to decide do you want like do i want to actually plan this whole trip and go myself or do i want to go with will and actually that'd be a terrible idea leaving planning to him but in theory go with will and let him plan everything um so yeah and also when you're coming to that sort of planning stage with your friends as morgan just said you really do need to decide if it's going to be a good big group normally helps if one or two people take the lead on the planning mm. who just sort of pester everyone just to keep it going otherwise it's a bit harder whereas if you do have a big group of everyone who really like planning and doing research can make it super easy yeah so first step once you've decided that you're either solo traveling you're going as a group you're going as just a pair of mates or you're going with your partner first thing you really should decide is what is your goal of adventure well so what isn't is... that the second thing because the first thing is solo be friend oh, it's the second thing it's the first thing after the solo it's the friend. first thing after the solo <laughs> exactly. be friend got it got it so yeah. the second thing is the goal so that is what you want to achieve from your travels whether it's you want to go for a beach holiday or just go out and get drunk or go hiking or go horse trekking you want to go on and you could specifically say, and I know it's kind of stereotype. I think you want to go and skydive you want to in go Australia to because you, yeah, you might want to go to Bali because it's <laughs> Bali, but you might want to go skydiving in Australia just because you really want to go to Oz. You've never skydived before, and you feel like that's going to. You're terrified of heights. Like, I'm really scared of heights, and funny enough, I have skydived. I did skydive for the first time in Australia. Yeah, and I thought you were about to say I'm scared of heights. But that's <laughs> definitely not true. But that is a very good point that you've just spoken about Australia and that in our episode three, we do a deep dive into Australia and we actually talk about the skydiving, I think. We do. We do. We do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> so once you've selected your goal, that's going to really nicely fit into the next step, which is your budget for the trip. When you look at your goal for the trip, that easily goes into your budget and then those combined will help you pick your location for the trip because your goal for example could be i really want a beach holiday hmm. and you might think oh it'd be amazing to go we'll use bali seeing as we brought that up it'd be amazing to go to bali but then you go okay this is our budget and you say oh we've got let's say we want to go for a couple of weeks our budget is going to pick it out of the air 500 pounds hmm. problem is when you start looking at flights to indonesia and back you're going to be using the majority of your budget up. You could probably do quite well in Cornwall for £500. Or, for example, Spain. Yeah. Spain and Portugal, Portugal. you can get the flights there super, super cheap on the likes of EasyJet, Ryanair, all these budget airlines. Mm -hmm. And then also your accommodation there will be a lot will be a lot cheaper than let's say the likes of Cornwall. Yeah, so budget is quite important because all these different countries, not only as Will was saying, the cost to actually get out there the costs actually in the countries are very different so on average if you're traveling around the uk it's about 35 pounds a day dependent on where you are in vietnam you could probably go on about 15 pounds a day 
Uh, Colombia's about £18 a day, and Switzerland <laughs> is about £63 a day. So it really depends on what country you're going to as to how much you can spread your budget out. So the first part of planning, after the budget that is, um, or, or the fourth part, wh whatever way you're counting, is the time frame. So this is very important to think about because you need to decide well, how much you can do, you need to decide how much time you're spending in different places. And a very important thing to decide here, if you're doing a tour, so this could be travel. So for example, traveling around Colombia, there are some things that you can do self-guided and some things that you have to do guided tours, like the Lost City Trek, for example. Guided tours are gonna to take a lot more time than if you did it yourself. Although with some sacred sites like that, for example, and Machu Picchu, which yeah. we did, it's it's quite, I suppose, technically you could do it alone. You could get the train. You did Machu Picchu completely. Yeah, right? you could get the train there and then buy the ticket on the door. This, I think it quite drastically depends your adventure, it depends knowledge of the country. The problem is that Morgan and I aren't exactly linguists. So when it comes to certain countries, we're English. We're very English. When it comes to certain Hola. countries... <laughs> ¿Cómo estás? Una cerveza, por favor. <laughs> when it comes to certain countries, we don't necessarily want to take the risk of just going at it on our own without having someone with us in our group or a guide, for example, who does speak the local language. Yeah, it, it depends how comfortable you feel because I, I spent three weeks in Colombia alone without speaking any Spanish and I you can download Google Translate now which makes it easy that it's offline so as long as you feel safe in that country which i personally did feel okay all right safe enough in colombia um then the language is <laughs> yeah it's safe in colombia i felt fine without knowing the language because of google translate and that got me enough you learn the basic phrases which i've already listed off and then i'd also say donde esta which is where is and then I'd go back to English and say the English word for things. And that tended to work. Or you make signs, like people know sort of sign language. Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> As Morgan suggested that the guiding side can take a lot more time. And in the future episodes, we do really talk about it, just like in our deep dive for the Australia episode. Mm. But when you're doing your complete self-guiding instead of a guided tour, Morgan and I managed to get, I think we averaged two or three major activities a day within our time zone. In New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. When, we, when, we did, when we did New Zealand, we were doing at least three major things a day. Whether it be we'd go do something crazy, then we spend the rest of the day like skiing for the first time ever in New Zealand. Or another day, we, you know, we did the glow worms yeah. and then another cave. The gold panning. Yeah, we did gold panning. We just drove wine past tasting. it. It was amazing. We, yeah, we were just covering so many different things. And I mean, personally, I do love doing as much self-guided things as mm -hmm. possible because it's, you come across things just like the goal planning where it wasn't planned. We would never have come across it if we were on a on one of the Greyhound buses. We'd we, never have come yeah, across it. Yeah, we wouldn't have looked it up. We wouldn't have chosen to go, gone out our way I to do it. I don't think we would have been told about it. No, no. And it was a lot of fun. And also the tours tend to be quite a bit more expensive. Plus you have to tip all your guides, but then also you're guaranteed to be with people, which can be both good and bad, dependent on yeah. the group of people. So we've had uh, Fraser Island, where we're still in contact with loads of people there and really enjoyed that. Machu Picchu, we got on with people a lot. Whit Sunday, we were slightly unlucky. We did a three day tour and we just happened to be on a boat that had nothing against older people, but it had a family of. They were all mid 50s, late 60s. And this was. And the trip like was a, meant to be designed at, I think, sub 35. Sub 35 party ish uh, sailing boat. And it, it, it was less. No. So. So, so. We did teach people how to uh, take take photos of the stars. We did. Not on a tripod, on a moving boat. Now you've gone through your goals, budget, and time frame, 
The next thing logically to look for is your location. The reason for this is that you've got everything set out and you might have come across a few options for your location that you might not have thought of before. So I'm gonna run a little test on Morgan. I'm going to give him a goal, a budget and a time frame. Then he's gonna come up with a potential country option off the top of his head. <laughs> so my goal is going to be an event child day. Okay, that's quite broad. I, like I, want, I want extreme adventure. I want to do something, oh, goodness I want to do something out of the norm. Right. I want to do my budget is going to be we're gonna say 500 pounds oh so it basically has to be Europe and I'm going away for um, a long bank holiday weekend but I've taken the Friday off as well so I've got four days away four days 500 pounds and I want to do something very adventurous in that time frame I would, I would, I would probably say my number one go-to that I can think of in my head would be going to Kiev in Ooh. Ukraine. And what would I be doing there? Uh, you would spend two days at Chernobyl. Okay. Because definitely recommend two days, not one day, because it means you so can we'll go say that's to the, Saturday and Sunday done. Go to the popular sites um, when the crowds aren't there. Yeah, and then in Kiev, I would say you have to go to the Plaza Number Six, which is this speakeasy. Okay, where you can do shots. That could be that could be Friday. Yeah, where you can do where you do shots, um, and they set set your head on fire. Where you yeah. wear a helmet, and they set your head on fire. Then you would do an urbex tour, which is seeing what on on the first half of Monday. Yeah, in Kiev, and or this potentially in the evening before the speakeasy. Yeah. Yeah, either. Yeah, we could do on the Friday. Um, and this would be going underground into the catacombs of Kiev, and you'd also go into a, a manned and Cold War bunker, which would be pretty cool. Um, and then the last, the Monday morning, the last, last Before your morning, afternoon flight home. The last morning, I'd say you go to the beach. There are beaches in Ukraine. Go to the beach. Um, if you want to make it adventurous or extreme, uh, you can jump off the bridges into the river. Um, and there is an amazing uh, gym next to the beach, sort of an open air gym that has sort of boxing rings and things like that. So you could go and try fight someone. <laughs> so there we have it. That is just a really quick example of something which, you know, I normally wouldn't have picked off the top of my head. And hopefully our viewers and listeners here might think slightly outside of the box. I think a great tip as well is when you've sort of combined your budget and everything is going onto Skyscanner. Mm -hmm. Say where you're coming from, clicking your- private local... browsing as well. Yeah, private browsing, because then it means that they don't look at your IP address and everything and they'll- all... Don't bump up the prices. Yeah, don't, don't sneak up that price. So yeah, um, Skyscanner, clicking your like your location you're leaving from, click in your dates that you want to go away, click in how many people you've got in your group trying to get tickets. And then there's a setting for your destination as everywhere or anywhere. Yeah. And when you click search, then it's going to give you a really good list of from cheapest to most expensive, all the different locations by country that you can go to. And then you can click on that and it'll break it down to the city. So that's a really good way of seeing where your money could go in that time frame. And if you have a budget and a time frame, and but not a goal, apart from just to get abroad, that's also not a bad thing. And then when you come into the location, you do everywhere. And this actually happened with us when we did a trip, to which we ended up going to Barcelona. But what we did was we said, right, this weekend we're going away on this budget. We looked up the five cheapest places. Can you remember which ones? Well, we, we actually decided the night before we're leaving this isn't this wasn't a long-term planning this was one, yeah this was one night before leaving that we decided. we're just like we need to get out i think i think we're dublin barcelona pisa um there were two other two other places i feel like Mar i feel like marrakesh could have been yeah there. i think marrakesh might have been in and then let, let's just say somewhere in croatia so so we basically we had the five cheapest flights and the way we chose where we were going for this weekend was we found a five horse race and then we got a random number generator to put the countries 
to each horse and then whichever horse won that was the place we went to and uh, we ended up going to barcelona and it cost us 125 pounds each on lastminute.com mm -hmm. and that was return flights from gatwick on ba and three nights in a four-star hotel. We had no plans. Not a single plan until we got out there. We went to a Barcelona game. We went to the beach. We went to Sagrada Familia. We did beer tasting multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> including in our hotel and at this... Can you remember what the place was called? Because you got the T-shirt. Literally. Remember you bought the T-shirt at the beer oh, tasting um, place? <laughs> oh, God. All God, all God, yeah. Yeah, all God. And they, I think they had about 32 craft beer taps. And then when we were... And we just learned things. Uh, and this is often the best way to plan a trip, is when you're actually out there going and speaking to people. So if, when we were in the hotel, we worked out that you can get these passes for the metro that means you can go anywhere for, a, I think it was six trips or uh, something Well, like you that. buy them in lots of, I think, 10s, 15s or 20s. Yeah. We were able to get really cheap train travel around Barcelona. And then the other thing was when we were actually at the game, we just went and saw some young people and went and spoke to them and they happened to be Americans, which there are a lot of Americans in Barcelona, yes. a lot, uh, on a sort of year abroad. Yeah, they're all studying, I think. Yeah, one of the study abroad view. thing. And they then told us which bars we needed to go to and what were the best places to go to, which we then did that evening. We had a fantastic night. That was one of our most memorable things. And that's the, that's the nice spontaneity of planning sometimes the best thing to do is not to plan i think if you try and over plan a lot of your trips and this is definitely 100 percent one of the most important first best kept secret this will be because this is episode one this could be our official first best kept secret on the podcast we're going to get it up on the podcast for our viewers you'll hit see now best kept secret is try not to plan too much the more you plan, the more susceptible you are to things going wrong, right? Yeah. The more plans you have, the more flights you've booked from the beginning of your trip, the more delays you've opened yourself up to, the more restricted you are on the exciting things that can mm. happen on your adventure, the flexibility drastically goes, then you're suddenly in a rush the whole time to get from A to B. You're not yeah enjoying the long-term like flow between a to b and then certain countries yeah you have to plan a lot stricter you know some african country i've been to i've had to be stricter some south american countries we actually had to prove that you've got a ticket leaving the country yeah yeah that's very true but that's i think one of our biggest giveaways of this episode is plan to an extent plan to make sure you're safe and everyone on that trip is safe but don't plan too much Safe so, alive. Yeah, don't plan so much <laughs> that it restricts your trip and restricts the fun and the adventures that you can have. Yeah, so my general way of doing it is I actually tend to pick more activities than are actually possible to do. And then I pick my favourites and go, right, I have to do that, have to do that. And then anything else is just sort of an addition and like a good positive. And if you have the time, you do it. If you don't, you don't. And we've had, in New Zealand, you were saying we had times where we were able to do lots of stuff. And then in South America, when we went from Iguazu to Rio, we had delays, which meant that we got, we got to Rio late and we only had one day there. So we missed... So we squeezed a lot into one day. We squeezed a lot into Christ one day. Lima, late night football... Going to the favelas. Yeah, we did everything. We did we did a lot, and it was raining, so the beaches weren't the best idea. But and we actually we still got a lot done, but we just adjusted the plan slightly. Yeah, and things happened at different we times. Did, we, we always didn't... give ourselves that flexibility. Yeah, yeah. It'd be right. very easy, you know, sat here in the UK before we go to let's say Rio. Hmm. to just try and book too many things yeah accommodation sometimes you really do want to book it especially in busy season but there are so many things which you really don't need to book unless it's a massive tourist attraction and it's known for filling up yeah so you need to know which activities you actually need to book beforehand 
like Machu Picchu, you're always told you 100% have to book months in advance. In our experience, that's not true. When we did go out, with tour guide. We did. We did. But when we were out there, there were hostels selling it for the next day. Yeah, that's true. And cheaper than the prices we got. So don't always believe everything you read. But try and do your research to but find out whether you everything need to book that it. we say. Yeah, everything that I say, plus some of what Will says. When you're trying to find inspiration for all of these holidays, just like Morgan and I said, trying to find those things that you really want to do. One of the best ways of doing it now in this modern day is using social media. It's using the likes of Instagram. It's using the likes of TikTok. It's using the likes of YouTube as well, or even mm. podcasts where they talk about it. So. I mean, let's crack out some people who we love following. Sam Calder. Sam, uh, Eva Zubek. Yes Theory. Drew Binsky. Bald and Bankrupt. Uh, Indigo Traveller. Jacob. Cara and Nate. No, you could, you could even use the likes of, let's say, David Attenborough when you're watching BBC Planet or any of the shows that he does. Or, or the best one that I heard was Best Kept Secrets Travel. Or Best Kept Secrets yeah. Travel. <laughs> Definitely at the top of my list. Right at the top. Place. All of these people. Yes, yeah, some of them Wait, will is do... it a place to go? Best Kept Secret. <laughs> <laughs> Not a place to go. But all of these people will show you places. Some of them will be massive stereotypes. Some of them will be the likes of Barney. Mm. But then they will also show you things that you haven't done so Drew Binsky great example of it yes they're a great example of it hmm. Board of Mancock great example of it they're all examples of people who go out of their way to show everyone else things that people don't normally do on a day to day basis whether it's Drew Binsky going and running around the Pyongyang yeah. um, marathon in North Korea and he purposely only ran 10k so it meant he had four hours so he wasn't hmm. followed by a guide and he knew some tiny snippets of Korean, so he went up and tried to speak with the crowd, and they're all wanting photos with him. There are, like, bored of Bangkok going to the places and then walking Speaking to the Speaking to the babushkas. Bar. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's these guys who, if you're watching us now, these are the ones who really inspire us. Mm. Yeah, you've got the Jacob Sam Calders who go and do these amazing photography things, but it's these, not smaller because they're quite big now, but... Is he slightly quirkier personality? Well, they're a tiny bit bigger than us. Like. <laughs> Is he quirkier personality so willing to, you know, really make that leap of, you know, well, I actually want to do something different when I go travel? Yeah, and one that I found recently was Fearless and Far, Yeah, uh, which he's been going and see, having lots of different experiences at various different tribes around Africa. Oh, he does all the eating ones. He does some of the eating stuff and yeah. that and going on hunts as well. And this is just something that it feels really strange coming from the Western world to see how they live. And it's really interesting watching his videos and seeing how he portrays them and shows them. And I've seen a couple of his eating ones and he's really careful in his integration. He really commits to doing it the way they want him to do mm. and not bringing his Western touch to it. Yeah. Which is quite... It's, it's more of he's documenting his in his sort of in the life of experience yeah yeah and he he tries to, I always think I like him because he tries to keep it quite neutral uh, in that anything that would bring up a polarised opinion possibly he leaves it over, over to his audience and lets yeah. his community uh, get involved and comment what they think whether they think you should do this or that or whether sort of white westerners looking just sort of looking in on african tribes is a good thing for tourism yeah uh, and he all and he asks questions and lets the community talk about it which i i think is really interesting i think really... that conversation is really good yeah but at the end of the day this is really where we know that we can advise you all to find these find these like just like Morgan and I now just having well, conversations find about us it. yeah but just, <laughs> just us <laughs> like we're so small <laughs> Shelley, help everyone find us <laughs> and then we'll help best everyone best kept secret is travel but no, but we are a best kept secret because no one knows about us <laughs> <laughs> welcome to best kept secret number three <laughs> best kept secret travel podcast because no one's found us <laughs> <laughs> but it's all of these people who really inspired Morgan and I to actually be here on this first episode with you guys today. It's, 
you know, the likes of Drubinsky and Jake or whatever on who they've made us want to show the rest of the world the things that we've done and try and inspire everyone out there to go and take the and next step. They adventure. really inspire me and I want to go to loads of places they've been to and I also get very excited when they go to places that I've been to. Exactly. And then I see how like, well... No, we've been there first. Yeah, <laughs> and, I, and I see how well they film it compared to how I film it and I'm like, <laughs> getting there. And improving. But other important ways to research your trip is to just Google. Google the best things to do, the best places to see, the best activities, or the obscure hidden gems or best kept secrets uh, in all these countries, because Google is obviously a fantastic search engine. I personally don't really like TripAdvisor for researching trips. A lot of fake reviews on that. Booking things on TripAdvisor works when you find it. So the Urbex tour I booked on TripAdvisor, but actually researching for stuff, TripAdvisor is not that useful. So Google, Pinterest is another one, and obviously Instagram. Like you can literally type in a location on Instagram and it will show it and you can just look All through the photos hashtags. and you go, I want to go there. I want to go there. Like the um the the abandoned disneyland uh, palaces in turkey it just the pictures look amazing i want to go uh but and then another one that i'm not ashamed to admit because we're on tiktok best kept secrets travel but tiktok for travel inspiration there are lots of travel people on tiktok and they will show you all these amazing things and they will help you. And when I was in Scotland, I actually used TikTok, embarrassingly, to find a hill. I can't remember what the hill was called, but to actually camp and stay the night. And it was really useful. <laughs> because we slept in the car the night before. <laughs> on the side of the road, and that was less exciting and comfortable. So rolling on from the embarrassment of Morgan using TikTok as his main source of research in Scotland, <laughs> is once you've done your research and you really know where you want to go, you've got your time frame, your budget, your location, your goal. It's really where are you going to stay? And if My you're in car. a well, <laughs> <laughs> if you're in a big group, that's when it gets a little bit harder. Because some people, when you're looking at accommodation and transport, because transport is next as well, and it applies to both, is some people outright will have very strong opinions about where they won't stay, where they 100% want to stay, the vehicles they won't go in, the ones they 100% want to go in. Hmm. And on top of this, if you're the larger your group is, the harder it is. For example, let's use some hostel rooms. Most hostel rooms we've seen will either go up to eight, six people, eight people, 16 or about 24. Mm. Taxis, most taxis realistically overseas will take about four. The tuk-tuks I've seen with about seven or eight. And it depends obviously what your luggage, pile them up. your luggage is as well. Which is obviously a, quite a big thing when you are traveling is like you have the big backpacks and the big bags. So and there are a lot of taxis squishy. I haven't wanted to put my backpack in the boot. Yeah. And the larger group is all of things all these things become harder. So when you're looking at accommodation you you might be looking at let's say hostels, but then you might have someone in the group who outright goes, Oh, I don't ever want to stay in a hostel and then you're looking at Airbnbs and hotels yeah. and then suddenly your budget jumps up and then your time frame might have to change, your location might have to change. So as much as we talk about these in stages, you'll have to constantly refer back to that mm. budget and overall goal of what you really want to achieve on the trip. And, and whether you want to go with that friend. <laughs> exactly. And there might be times where you go, actually, no, maybe... Maybe this trip's not Maybe them. instead of going they, with they, eight people, we, we're just going to go as a four because we all want to do the exact same thing. And mm. none of you four wants to do it, but they all want to go and do similar which things. Is, which isn't a bad thing. Quite often I plan trips, book flights, and then start asking people <laughs> if they want to join because quite often people struggle to commit to things yeah and we'll just say oh yeah it'll be great yeah it'll be good idea i'd love to do it or i the most annoying thing is i'd love to do that yeah but then nothing ever happens so i just book the flights and then go yeah let, let's go so that is a and great hope. time to plug this pdf because once you download and print off this pdf or just download the pdf and start filling it in it's going to make a huge difference we've got this pdf in the description below and there's going to be a link down there. If you click on it, 
and you follow all of that, you'll be able to end up with a PDF of your very own. Oh, how lucky. Exactly. And the second that you print that off, start writing it down, that is the beginning of your adventure, and that is when you start to commit. It's when you get that pen to paper, as I said at the beginning of the episode, that's the beginning of your adventure, and your chance of that adventure going through, so much more likely. COVID restrictions applying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> so yeah, back to this accommodation. There are great ways of booking accommodation as well. We've got Hostel, Hostel World, World, Airbnb, Couch Surfing, uh, LastMinute.com. Yeah, you can even use Hotel.com. Yeah. And Booking.com. <laughs> These are the best ways of booking your trips. Internet They're the ones that we use. And sometimes you'll just go and book them in person. South America, we book loads of our hostels just by turning up. And the massive benefit on that, now the best kept secret, is that by booking in person, you will actually be saving this hostel. Booking fees. Booking fees. And quite often, they will pass that directly on. We found even some of the hostels in South America are about half the price in person. Unless they're fully booked, then it doesn't work. Then it really doesn't work. But this is just, you know, part of your deciding how much you want to plan your trip but when it depends whether you where you want to go whether you're just going somewhere and you're staying in a random hostel or you've been recommended this hostel and told that it's amazing and you have to go there so then obviously it's probably better just to book in advance or if you know there's it's pretty busy season and there's only one or two hostels in the whole area we then do recommend you book in advance but in Cusco for example in Peru there's so many hostels yeah. we did not need to book even at maximum capacity of Cusco I'll be surprised if they filled up all the hostels with tourists because there were just so many yeah but you you want to stay in Wild Rover if you're in Cusco yep <laughs> it is you, so we're not going to explain fun. why you just look it up and that's it it's, Wild Rover it's a Spelled lot of like fun it's a, it's a lot of fun Lastly, on our accommodation is actually probably one of the most cost-effective, flexible routes of just doing any holiday, which Sleeping is... Sleeping on the floor. Yes, it can be. Either camping or getting a camper van. The massive benefit of a camper van is you can drive where you want, you can sleep where you want, almost. Ish. Ish, roughly. Look up the rules in your local area. Or country. <laughs> oh, yeah. But... A camper van is just definition of flexibility to mm. us. It's what we use in Australia and New Zealand. It means that when you see the Greyhound buses in Australia, there's just one single route. You can never really go off it. Having the camper van meant, oh, you know, 50 miles more inland, there's this amazing thing where you really want to see it. And we could have only ever done that if we got a camper van or we mm. made an absolute fortune for someone to take us yeah. literally just there and back. And up there on the list on flexibility... You're limiting your group size quite a lot with this, but camper van's definitely up there. Yeah, I think you could probably get four in a camper van, in a normal camper yeah. van that you'd get. You yeah. wouldn't really want many, many more than that. No, I'd, I'd, I'd do four because you also want to... Four would be max. The second that your camper van starts going over a certain size as well, you're, let's say you're getting a ferry between North and South Island and New Zealand, or your ferry fees go up, your some of the accommodation sites will charge for a van of a certain length there are lots of things which start to add on the second that you jump up the size of your vehicle Plus, the more the more people the worse the van smells yeah but then your benefit is the more people you have the lower mm. your petrol Low. costs on average yeah, more cost the lower effective because your... you just have to buy one camp van exactly just start to do your cost benefit analysis and then basically that fee just starts dropping cost benefit analysis is very important Morgan's an accountant. <laughs> this is our, as you know, and we've said multiple times, this is our first episode of the podcast, and podcasts are really hard to grow. So we would be really grateful if you could tell your best friend, your worst enemy, just anyone and everyone who you think could be interested in this podcast and what we've been talking about. And one of our goals, or at least my goal for this this season is actually to see how many countries we can get listening to the podcast already after the trailer uh i think we have one five or six countries yeah i think six countries In, yeah six countries we, that obviously will be going up now but i think it's not just that i think if you have 50 friends or more 
on your Facebook alone or your Instagram and you share this on there and you can convince your friends to download it and follow us. Oh. If you get a hundred of your friends to subscribe to us on YouTube. That'll be a tree. You guys plant a tree. <laughs> We will plant that tree in the name of our, your 100 friends. If you get 50 of your friends to follow us on podcasts, you will also plant a tree. Or you just follow us on multiple different podcasts. Platforms. And you will plant a lot of trees. <laughs> My point is, plant together, trees. we can help you <laughs> and you can help the world. I don't know what was that, that was. Was that a question mark? That was very much a question mark. You guys can <laughs> help, help the, the world. world. Question mark. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, that's our little plug for the trees. <laughs> now, back to our last and not really final point, because this is just a brief first episode on planning. There is so much depth that we could go into. We could start talking about travel insurance, um, credit cards for going out. And like which ones you should get for which countries. We've even got future episodes with kit packing, just tiny sort of snippets into like camera packing and what we get in our bags. Yeah, so there is so much more. So the final point for today is going to be transport. If you're traveling solo, transport costs, for example, going from airport to actually in town aren't going to be split and they're going to be more expensive. And the bigger the group, uh, the more the cheaper it will be. But when you're in a big group then you can split it up but then you also might have different people that have different preferences so there might be someone who doesn't like flying or doesn't want to go in a bus or train or any sort of transport and that's where it gets more complicated and you sort of have to have a consensus around it and that makes things slightly more difficult but possibly cheaper as we're saying with the camper van yeah, camp van definitely makes it cheaper because you're, the second that Morgan and I are driving together, you know, for every few hundred miles, you're only spending, let's say, 30, 40 pounds on fuel. In Australia, is half the price of that. So your traveling costs really cheap. Your accommodation costs super cheap. In New Zealand, you can camp anywhere in a camper van for free, basically, known as freedom camping. And there are apps which show you just how many places there are and you can do that in norway and that's alamans 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 written law that place i got it <laughs> it's not a place it's a law <laughs> <laughs> which means you can pretty much do the same and camp everywhere and just as everything there are massive advantages of doing this there are disadvantages yeah for example you don't get the fun of being in a hostel but when you're over overseas it really depends. It goes Str- back. Struggle to shower. It goes back to that goal, though. Is what is your goal? Do you just want to get out there, spend as much time sort of outdoors, getting mm. in, squeezing in ventures, or actually do you want to have, you know, every other day you're just having a Dress few up drinks, nice in a... clothes in the sun and chill? Yeah, you could be doing anything, and we're not going to judge you on what you're doing. We're just trying to help you guys decide and get that plan together to plan that next venture, whether it is just sitting by a beach in the Caribbean or Cornwall or Spain, so be it. Or Ukraine. But all of these rules apply about transport, about accommodation, about your goal and location and time frame. All of this will still apply, no matter how ridiculously different your previous goal is. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> have you got a favourite type of transport that you've uh, that you've been on? The most memorable thing you've you've had you've had to go on at some point. Uh, the most memorable um, would be parachute. After that, um, and where was your A to B location and why parachute? I think it was somewhere in um, Norfolk was the first time but then the other time was Ailey Beach and that was that was really pretty Norfolk less so it's your favourite transport <laughs> uh, so either yeah it's a great mode of transport flying <laughs> you're not wrong <laughs> via parachute I don't remember in Australia you, you, you travelling very far you, you with your backpack nor travelling very far okay so apart from vertically okay so the next one was going to Middle Island via a I can't, it's hard to describe. Oh, the, the US Navy Lark, which yes, is... Uh, that, that's the one. 
Which is a land and sea, boat land car. and water. <laughs> yeah, basically a boat car. That was the coolest mode of transport. That was very cool. Um, when I did Red Bull, Can You Make It? Um, we we uh, travelled a bit in a police car. We asked to. It really? Was, it was one of the challenges. You had to get in some sort of emergency services car. That's pretty cool. By choice. They, they <laughs> specifically said by choice. So that was quite fun. I do like, I'm, I'm a big fan of tuk-tuks. Tuk-tuks are great fun. and golf buggies, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what it is. I mean, they're not the safest things in the world, but it's that open top feeling. Yeah. Whizzing around. Well, how, yeah, how cheap it is as well. And, oh, tuk tuk is so much fun. I was terrified in a taxi in Morocco. <laughs> <laughs> Although I must say they're not good for long distance journeys. What, tuk tuk? Mm. Funny that. Not very comfortable. I had an hour one. It wasn't even long distance. It was just uh, Bangkok traffic. Oh. It was painful. Like, truly painful. <laughs> probably it's probably really six enjoyable years off your experience. Life, yeah. Just with pollution, just stationary. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> yeah, no, that's so... <laughs> for short distances, Tuk Tuk's are great. Now, to finish off, we're going to give you guys a quick and very brief snippet of how we planned one of our favourite adventures. We don't know how to do brief. <laughs> brief? We're going to try and make it try. And um, the reason we're doing it brief is because on... Two episodes time, you get a deep dive into Australia. It's coming out at the same time. Yeah, it's actually already out right now, which means that once you finish this, you can watch our next episode, which is a mini episode on how you can all save money whilst you're out traveling. And the one after that is a big episode into deep diving in Australia, where we one. try and get in as much information as possible. And even with all of that information, we're just scratching the surface on the amazing country. But for now, we're going to give you a quick, quick brief snippet. Brief. Briefish. Into how we planned our trip for New Zealand and a tiny bit of Oz. So more so actually how we planned Australia whilst in New Zealand, mm. even though it was all within the same holiday. So we got into New Zealand. We had two weeks there. We blitzed New Zealand north to South yeah. Island, and then we got to Queenstown. So we, yeah, so we basically had the outskirts of the plan done. We had our flights booked so for Australia, flights to Australia, and from New Zealand to Australia to Uluru and up to Cairns, and that was it. And that was it. We didn't really have set plans. We had no idea what we were doing along the whole of the East Coast. Until we realised we needed plans. We didn't know in New Zealand. We only planned that like the day before. We were like, oh, and look, most of it those on the day. <laughs> those activities are close. We'll do that one That's first. On route. And then, yeah, <laughs> do that one next. So, yeah, New Zealand we very much did off the cuff. We just went, right, we'll do that first, then that next. We have to go to that. Oh, we'll sleep here now. Oh, we'll do that, that, and that. Whilst we're in New Zealand, we had a vague idea of lots of activities that we wanted to do. Yeah. And I think it was whilst I was... I swear I was doing some... I was bungee jumping. Yeah. Whilst you were in Happy Travels. I think I popped into Happy Travels for the first time. Quick shout out to them as well. I know they've probably struggled a lot with COVID and we're hoping that they're actually still around after all of this. But an amazing little family travel agency. They made us so happy. Massive shout out to them. They were very happy and made us very happy. But yeah, I popped into Happy Travels initially and then we ended up coming back past them mm. after going to the, is it Ferg Burger in, Queens Ferg, but, oh, in Queenstown? Which amazing. is like these amazing burgers. And then... I don't know, it was quite late in the evening and we were about to go to the camper and, well, go back to the hostel actually and have a couple of beers. But um, we then ended up spending, I don't know, maybe like an hour, hour and a half in Happy Travels. And in that time frame, we literally planned the next three and a half weeks of our holiday. Mm. All just sat down, blitzed it, just went, right, that's it. We need to do all of that because... So we were out there and we realised through talking to people and we didn't know this before going out there that you couldn't do all of this just off the cuff and that lots of things needed to be booked in advance so that's the big trips that we wanted to do were Fraser Island, Whitsundays, uh, Middle Island which was a castaway experience. We had an amazing 10 kilometre run on the Sunshine Coast. Yeah. Uh, and they were sort really of our <laughs> big sort of things that we had to do. 
and we had to work out how to fit that all in. So then we sort of try to blitz plan that whilst we're out there and then we just went and enjoyed it really to be honest we didn't completely book up we just booked up the main section of it but we were averaging two three activities a day same again but it just meant as we were going through if we well, had there a were longer there, there were longer activities in australia we got to actually meet humans and we also had a lot further to drive because we're going from cairns to sydney in three and a half weeks yeah and then back on happy travels is that night we went on a bar crawl with them uh, which was great fun i won a limbo competition in which i then got two for one kayaking two byron for one bay. kayaking in byron bay with dolphins and also a free surf lesson yeah in byron bay which is all pretty damn good for winning a limbo competition so it was definitely worth it but i did hurt my back from doing that limbo. yeah you've been the camper van for the, <laughs> the remainder of the day or something just complaining about it yeah but it was definitely worth it and we had a great time because again the surf lesson we wouldn't have even in bar and bear i don't think we would have picked nor would we have probably picked the I think we would have kayaking. contemplated the kayaking quite strongly. Possibly, but I don't know whether we where we would have heard about it. I think we would have seen it once it's dirt. But we only had half a day in Byron, really. Oh yeah, we only stayed one day. Oh, and then we tried to go out. Oh, we did the quiz. We did <laughs> now we are quiz. going off, <laughs> off topic. Slightly off topic. Yeah. But, I mean, if we're going to say anything. My favourite thing in the quiz was when uh, Ola, who's like six foot three, they got a guy and a girl to come up and the guy and the girl had to swap clothes and it was a six foot three guy <laughs> and a five foot four girl <laughs> trying to swap clothes. <laughs> oh, that was, that, I was think, uh, that was fun. I did forget about that for a while. <laughs> so everyone, really sadly, but amazingly, that is all we have time for on this first episode of Best Kept Secrets Travel Podcast. We hope you've enjoyed it. And if you do have any feedback, please leave in the comments below. Get onto our Instagram. They're all going to be popping up now. Send us a message. Send us an email. But we hope you've enjoyed it. If you sub now, if you follow us now, you've got a chance of being part of planting a tree. Well, not even chance, guarantee of planting a tree. <laughs> yeah, one one hundredth of a tree exactly send this to your family and friends because it massively helps us and also by following the podcast now and also trying to watch the next episode you're really helping us jump up the chart so more people can find the most amazing best kept secrets out there roll the outro yeah let's make it happen i hope that you can handle uh, going on adventures best kept secret travels yeah all over the globe having fun you know the deal amazing secret locations hang out with morgan and will uh, educate and entertain haggle in the market uh, sharing their experiences time to get it started let's go